Hello and welcome to this session in which we will discuss itemized deductions that goes on Schedule A. The first thing we need to know about itemized deduction is they are deduction from AGI, not for AGI. What does that mean? I know I keep repeating this, but it's worth remembering. You have your 1040. On your 1040, there is a line called adjusted gross income. We have certain deduction that are deducted before AGI. We call them for AGI, before AGI. Itemized deduction are deducted after from adjusted gross income. So that's important. And those expenses, those deductions, by nature, they are personal expenses. Simply put, they are not trade. They don't belong to your business. They are personal in nature. Now, personal include if you are an employee or if you have investment. But again, if, you, if you're following my lectures, employee and investment deductions are suspended from the year 2015, 2018, not 2015, 2018 to 2025. So what we are left with is other itemized deduction other than employee and investment deduction. And these deductions are subject to individual limit and must be collectively exceeds the standard deduction. So the itemized deduction are only good if you add them all up and we're going to see what they are, all of them. When you add them all up, all the itemized deductions, they have to be greater than the standard deduction. Now, how much is the standard deduction? The standard deduction is a number given by the government every year. Every year they tell you the standard deduction is 28,000 or 32,000. I'm making these numbers up. I'm not specific to any year. So you know, because it's going to change every year. So the only you would use those schedule A only if they are greater than the standard deduction. Otherwise, if you don't have enough of them, you don't use them. You would just, just take the standard deduction, which is you will take a deduction given by the government. Otherwise, you would use the standard deduction. Now, there are less usage of Schedule A. Why? Two reasons why people are using less and less Schedule A. One, as I just mentioned, there are certain deductions that are suspended, and those are employee and investment expenses that are personal in nature between 2018 and 2025. That's one reason. The second reason is this. When the tax law was changed in 2017 during the President Trump administration, what President Trump did, he increased the standard deduction. He took away the, some deductions, but he increased the standard deduction. And the purpose was to simplify the process. Simply put, I'm just going to give you the, st the standard deduction. This way, you don't have to worry about adding up all those itemized deductions, which consist of medical and dental expenses, specific taxes, interest paid on mortgage and investments, charitable contribution, and other miscellaneous expenses, which are suspended. So what we're going to do, we discussed miscellaneous expenses when we talked about deductions for employer and employee. What we're going to do, we're going to, in this session, we're going to discuss specifically medical and dental expenses. And medical and dental expenses, this is a Schedule A, so you can see the form, and goes in this section right here, medical and dental expenses. Then we discuss taxes, then we discuss interest, then we discuss charitable contribution. So I'm going to focus on one topic at a time, starting with medical and dental expenses. So notice here, it's medical and dental. So let's go ahead and get started. Before we proceed any further, I have a public announcement about my company, FarhatLectures.com. Farhat Accounting Lectures is a supplemental educational tool that's going to help you with your CPA exam preparation as well as your accounting courses. My CPA material is aligned with your CPA review course such as Becker, Roger, Wiley, Gleam, Miles. My accounting courses are aligned with your accounting courses broken down by chapter and topics. My resources consist of lectures, multiple choice questions, true-false questions, as well as exercises. Go ahead, start your free trial today. Medical and dental expenses, the first thing you need to do is they need to exceed, to be deductible, they need to exceed 7.5% of adjusted gross income. And if you look at the form itself, it says here, multiply line two by 7.5%. So they have to exceed your adjusted gross income. Now, why and what does that mean? Well, here's what happened. When the government wants to raise your taxes, what they would do is this. One way to do it is to simply raise the rate. For example, the tax rate is 20%, they can make it 24%. Another way to do it is to, is to start to put those uh, thresholds. Basically, something is deductible, however, it has to exceed a certain amount. 
So once it has to exceed a certain amount, you technically most people would lose the deduction. And by losing the deduction, they increase your taxes. So this is what the government do. They would take away the deduction without taking it away. Okay, it used to be 10%. It used to be, you have to even have, it was a higher threshold. At some point, historically, there was no threshold for medical expenses. Then they started to impose this threshold. This is just a historical lesson. So medical expenses are deductible to the extent unreimbursed medical expenses. Unreimbursed means you did not get money for them, exceeds 7.5% of adjusted gross income. So the first thing we want to learn about this, for example, Emily, age 24, her adjusted gross income is 40000 Her medical expenses are 5000 How much can she deduct? Well, she can only deduct 2000 How did we come up with this? Well, her unreimbursed medical expenses are $5,000. Then the only thing that's deductible is 7.5% in excess of $40,000, and that's $3,000. So she, has, she is $2,000 in excess of 7.5, because $5,000 minus $3,000 equals to $2,000. Now let's assume, on the other hand, Emily was reimbursed. The insurance paid her of the $5,000 that she incurred. They reimbursed her three. It means all what she have left is... 2000 then what would be her deduction well 5000 minus 3000 what's left is 2 well now if we take 2000 and replace the 2000 here 2000 minus 3000 equal to a negative 1000 she doesn't get any deduction because the 2000 is less than 7.5% of her adjusted gross income because once the insurance reimburses you simply put in the real world this this medical this medical expense is seldom taken because again, you have to have so much to exceed 7.5. And most people, they got insurance or they got their expenses reimbursed. But this is the formula. This is the formula. You will take your unreimbursed qualified medical expenses. You deduct from them. For example, for Emily, it was 5,000. So can she deduct the 5,000? No, she have, to, she have to reduce it by her adjustments, minus 3,000 then minus 7.5% of her AGI. And by the time you get to 7.5% of her AGI, that's another 3,000 because 40,000 times 7.5. What's left for her is a negative, so she cannot deduct. The only place where I saw this is alcohol program where the insurance does not reimburse alcohol recovery, alcohol and drug recovery. The one that I worked with in the real world. Otherwise, that deduction I seldom, seldom see. Or someone had a major operation it was not covered in through insurance. That's another way. What are some medical expenses that are deductible? Now, this is a list, and this list, those two lists are not exhaustive. So you might be saying, how would I remember this for the exam? Well, here's some tips for you. Remember, they are medical and dental. Medical and dental. That's the first thing you want to remember. So anything that's medical and dental, and it's required by a hospital, by a doctor, it is deductible. It has to be required. Doctor and dentist fees, hospital and nurse and home expenses. Not any type of medication, prescription medication. They have to be prescribed. Health insurance premium, which we'll talk about later. Long-term care services and premium, we'll talk about later. Medical equipment and supplies, as long as they are required. Transportation expense, we'll talk about a little bit more later. Those are, we need to talk a little bit more about so you will remember them. Including smoking cessation program, uh, guide dogs, and service animals, including their training and care, hearing aid and batteries, anything that's required, eye exam, glasses, contact lenses, physical therapy and rehab expenses, home, mod home modification for medical expenses, we'll talk about those. Now, what's not deductible? I think it's easier to kind of learn what's not deductible. Something over the counter, it means that it's not prescribed by a doctor. Unless it's a prescribed, it's not. For example, health club and gym membership. It's great to go to the gym, it's healthy but it's not deductible. Cosmetic procedures, unless it's medically necessary, and I will show you an example. Non-prescription vitamins or supplement. Elective surgeries. Notice here it's elective. Elective treatment, funeral or burial expenses. Non-prescription, non-prescription, weight loss. Those are not deductible. Obviously, illegal medical treatment or drugs, obviously. Uh, HSA, uh, health-related expenses reimbursed by insurance health-related expenses, medical expenses paid by a pre-contribution, which is an HSA or flexible account, those are not deductible. Let's start to talk about 
to go a little bit in details into what's deductible and what's not, starting with cosmetic surgery. As I said, if it's elective, it's not deductible. John, 68, paid 15000 to a plastic surgeon for a facelift procedure. The sole purpose is to enhance, enhance his appearance. Not deductible, not medically necessary. The 15000 does not qualify. On the other hand, Sarah experienced facial disfigurement due to a severe burn incident. As a direct consequence of the accident, of the incident, the cost of restorative cosmetic surgery undertaken by Sarah, let's assume 15,000, would be deductible medical expense. How about nursing home? When you put someone in a nursing home, is this deductible or not? Well, if the primary purpose of residing in a nursing home or home for the age is to receive medical care, notice is to receive medical care, the expense associated with the care, including meals and lodging, are deductible for medical expenses. So if they put you there, in the nurse, if you put someone in the nursing home, and the reason for that is to medically take care of you, okay, not for the convenience of the family, then it's deductible. However, if the primary reason in, the, in such facility is personal, personal means you, just, you would rather be in a nursing home rather than being home served by the family. It's your choice. Any cost related to medical or nursing can still be deductible However, meals and lodging, because meals and lodging will be a separate cost, is not. So the medical care is deductible if it's, if it's optional. Meals and lodging, it's not, because you can be home and you're not home. So for example, Olivia has a chronic heart issue requiring special, specialized medical treatment and nursing care. In January, her family made the decision to admit her to a nursing home that could take care of her and necessary health care services. Throughout the year, the total expenses of the nursing home amounted to 90000 And those nursing costs can amount to a lot. Among these expenses, 60000 were attributed to medical and nursing care, which is deductible. Now, due to Olivia's substantial need for medical and nursing care and the primary purpose of her replacement in the, placement in the facility, the entire 90000 which is lodging and meals, is also deductible because she needed that specialized care. She wasn't there because her family doesn't want to take care of her because, or she chose that, she was there necessary. Now, sometimes what you have to do, you have to put your dependent child in a, in a mental or physical disability school or uh, institution. Are these tuition uh, deductible? Well, tuition expenses for a dependent attending a special school for individual with mental or physical disabilities might be deductible. Okay, to qualify, the primary reason is it must be a specialized resources for addressing the individual impairment. So whatever they are servicing this in this child, it's a specialized service and it's needed. You cannot you cannot provide the service at your home. In such cases, both tuition and cost for meals and lodging can be claimed as a deductible expense. What could be an example? Christopher's son Ethan attended public school until the seventh grade. However, Due to Ethan's difficulties and academic struggle, he underwent an evaluation and was diagnosed with ADHD, Attention Deficit Hyperactivity Disorder. And based on the psychiatric recommendation, Chris made the decision to enroll him in a private school that specialized, specialized, notice specialized in providing individual attention to students with learning disabilities, such as ADHD. Well, the school offers a specialized curriculum developed by a team of educational and psychological professional. Well, the expenses of attending the school along the cost of any psychiatric care are medical deductible expenses. Sometimes what you have to do, you have to incur a capital expenditure. You have to change something in your home for medical expenses. For example, if you have a back pain, you might have to, you, the doctor might recommend a pool. Well, you have to build a pool, or if you cannot go upstairs, you need an elevator, they would recommend to put an elevator. The rule for capital expenditure is as follows. If dedicated by medical necessity, it's deductible. But let's talk a little bit more specific. That's the general rule. First of all, a doctor, a physician, must determine the medical necessity. You don't determine it. And the usage of that, of that facility has to be primarily for the patient. So if you build the pool, the reason is not because the family wants to have it, it's because it's needed for your back. The cost must be reasonable. You cannot just build a pool that's unreasonable, you know, all the uh, whistles and what's where it's not needed. 
Um, example of qualifying capital expenditure, dust elimination system, for example, for breathing, if you have issue with breathing, elevator, if you cannot go upstairs, van specially designed for wheelchair bound individual, for example, if you have a van and you have to put in it like a wheelchair that's, that's going to lift an individual. Additional qualified expenses may include swimming pool. If there's no access to a neighborhood pool, they'll ask you, you know, if you have an access to a neighborhood pool, then you can go there. Okay. And non-permanent air conditioners, such as window unit, those are deductible as well. Little bit more about capital expenditure. Both permanent improvement and their associated operating expenses is eligible for medical expenses. So after you put the elevator or that pool, any additional maintenance is deductible. It's, it's deductible in the year incurred. So as you maintain those facilities, those assets that you added, they are deductible. Now you don't take any de depreciation on these assets. Why? Because when you install the pool, the full amount is taken in that year. So, so you don't depreciate because you took the whole deduction. Okay, and it's, it's not in your benefit to depreciate because you want to take the full amount to exceed the 7.5% of adjusted gross income. The cost that's deductible, the cost is deductible to the extent it exceeds the increase in value of the related property. What does that mean? We'd look at an example. So what you do is you're gonna appraise your home after the capital improvement and determine this, okay? So let's take a look at an example. James suffered from a heart disease and his doctor recommended an installation of an elevator in his home. Great, to avoid climbing stairs. The cost of installing the elevator amounted to 12,000. So how much can you deduct? You will, you will take the cost minus any increase in value because you benefited from this 12,000, you benefit at 5,000, what's left is seven. So your net cost, your net cost is seven. And this is what we meant here by the cost is deductible to the extent it exceeds the increase in fair value, okay? Ongoing utilities expense and maintenance costs for the elevator are treated as medical expenses, as we mentioned, as long as the medical necessity for the capital expenditure persists. So if James became better, then we no longer take those deduction. Transportation cost incurred for medical care. Something we have to do, you have to travel, for example, you have to go to New York City or Philadelphia to a bigger city to have medical treatment. Deductible expenses are subject to an adjusted gross income floor, just like everything else. And deductible expenses include fares, taxi, train, plane, charges for ambulance services, and out-of-pocket out of pocket cost for using personal vehicle. So transportation expense is deductible, or you could use a government mileage allowance it's subject to change i'm not going to mention it because it's going to change every year it could be like 50 cent per mile or 30 cent per mile whatever that mile is also deductible transportation expenses include parking fees if you have to pay for parking fees tolls cost of accompanying individual like family member or nurses however the cost of meals during travel for medical purposes is not deductible because you have to eat whether you are home or traveling Physically handicapped individuals. Sometimes what you have to do is you have to make certain expenditure, capital expenditure made to facilitate independent living and productivity for physically handicapped individuals. And those would qualify as medical expenses. For example, you must widen the hallways. So this individual, they can push themselves and the doorways, they can go in and out. Install support bars and railings and adjust electrical outlets and fixtures so they can turn the electricity on and off. These expenses are necessary and these expenses are subject only to the adjusted gross income test floor with no increase in the home value considered so remember when we installed the elevator for james we looked at the ink the cost and we subtract the increase in fair value and what we deducted only the seven thousand for physically handicapped individual we don't reduce the value of the house we don't reduce the increase in value we don't have that it's only subject to the 7.5 percent floor. How about spouse and, and dependent medical expenses? Well, when cal calculating the medical expenses deduction, the taxpayer can include the medical expenses for their spouse and any dependent. Now, for the dependent and the spouse, there's no you don't subject this to a joint return or gross income. It doesn't matter what their gross income is and joint return. Okay, for example, Christopher, age 22, is married and enrolled as a full-time student at a university. Throughout the year, Christopher incurred medical expenses that were covered by his mother, Olivia. Now, Olivia provided over one half of Christopher's financial support for the year. Even if Christopher files a joint return with his wife, Olivia is eligible to claim the medical expenses because the joint return is not a factor in that. So his mother can claim his medical expenses on her return. 
Okay, so Olivia would combine her ma her own medical expenses, whatever she has, plus that of Christopher, although he's married, and he is filing with a, he's filing with his wife. It doesn't matter; she can get the deduction. Divorce individual. In the case of a divorce individual with children, specific rules apply to the non-custodial parent. So you you might be the non-custodial, and you could still claim medical expenses that you paid for the child. Okay, even though they're not you're dependent of the non-custodial because you're the non-custodial. Okay, so an example, Alex and Emily and Emily's divorce last year, Emily was granted custody of her child, Ethan. So Ethan with Emily. Throughout the year, Alex covers 3,000 of the medical expenses of Ethan. He's not the custodial. That's fine. Despite Ethan's being Emily's dependent, Alex has the ability to combine the 3000 with his medical expenses when calculate the medical expense deduction. Lodging while well, away from home for medical care. Sometimes you have to travel, you have to stay in a hotel. Are these deductible? Well, if the following conditions are met. One, the lodging is for the primary purpose of medical care and provided by a licensed physician in a hospital or similar medical facility. And most hospitals now, they, they have those facilities or they have they have a relationship with others. Reasonable, it has to be reasonable, okay? It cannot be too much. And the travel does not need to involve significant personal pleasure. Also, lodging expenses is limited. How much can you deduct is $50 per night per person. But I believe it's very, it's very small for hotel costs these days. And this deduction applies not only to patient, but also to any accompanying individual who must travel with the patient. Now, meals expenses are not deductible unless they are directly related to a medical care, to the medical care and provided at medical facility. So they have to be, for example, healthy food, and they are provided at the medical facility. Again, some hospitals, they do have those kind of like hotel medical facilities. If these meals qualify for a deduction, they are not subject to 50%. They are 100% deductible those medical meals. How about medical insurance premium when you when you have insurance? Is that deductible? Well, medical insurance premium either under a group plan or an individual plan is included with other medical expenses. Now sometime often in the US if you work for a company, the employer, your company, pays all or part of the medical insurance. Okay? Now the amount paid by the employer is not included in your income. So what happened is this you, the, the company pays for your medical insurance and they don't include it in your income. Now, bear in mind, although they don't include it in your income, it's deductible by your company. So your company deducts this as a expense for AGI. That's As far as the company is concerned, it's a business expense having you as an employee. Now, once they pay for it, it's not deductible by you. So you cannot deduct the medical insurance expense because you are getting the insurance expense basically free not free, you work for it, it's not deductible, but it's not subject to tax. You cannot deduct it because you did not pay taxes on that money, but it's deductible by your employer. Now the taxpayer is self-employed. Now what you do is you are the employer and the employee. Insurance premium paid for medical coverage, including your spouse and dependent or dependents, are deductible as a business expense for AGI, okay? So if you have your own company and you're using, you're paying your own insurance, then that's deductible. Now. Deduction is not allowed if the taxpayer is eligible to participate in an employer-provided plan or the taxpayer's spouse for that matter. What does that mean? Let's assume I have my own company. Can I deduct my medical insurance? I can as long as I don't work for another company that offer medical insurance or my wife works for another company and offer it. If they do, then I cannot deduct my medical insurance because you do have other option. When can you deduct? Year of deduction. When can you deduct? Well, medical expenses can only be deducted in the year they are paid, regardless of the taxpayer accounting method. Now, most taxpayer accounting method use the cash basis anyway. So it's when you pay it. And you cannot prepay and deduct. You know, the payment has to be related to a medical expense. Let's take a look at an example. At the recommendation of his dentist, Marcus C. Consultation from Dr. Johnson, specializing in restorative dental work. Dr. Johnson informed Marcus that the necessary restorative, restorative work, he recommended it, to cost $15,000 and require 40% prepayment. Notice it requires for all new patients. Marcus paid the $6,000 in 20x3 and the remaining balance in 20x4. So notice the payments were in two separate years. In this scenario, 
Marcus can claim medical expenses 6,000 for X3 and 9,000 9, in 2024. Now, now, what if Marcus paid the full amount in 20X3? It's not deductible. Now, you are better off paying everything in one year because you want, the, they want this amount as high as possible so you could exceed the adjusted gross income. How about reimbursement? When we have reimbursement, reimbursement means is when they pay you, when they pay you some money back by the insurance. Reimbursement for medical expenses received in the same year simply reduce the medical expense deduction. As I told you, you have your medical expense deduction minus the insurance reimbursement and what's left then it has to exceed 7.5% as I told you at the beginning. Okay. Now, sometimes what happened is this, you would receive reimbursement. You would receive reimbursement in a different year where you had the deduction in one year, you would receive the reimbursement in a different year. Under the tax benefit rule, which we covered in a separate recording, if the taxpayer receive insurance for medical expenses that were deducted, so year one, you had a deduction, year two, you got the money back. Well, if you got the money back and you took the deduction, you have to go back and include, not go back, include the income in year two, to the extent that that deduction benefited you, okay? However, if you did not itemized, in other words, in the year of expense were paid, you don't include that income. So if you don't get a benefit, you don't include the income. Let's take a look at an example. Ethan had an AGI of 45,000 and 20X3. He experienced an unfortunate car accident that resulted in 4,000 in hospital expenses and 1,700 in doctor bills. Also, he incurred 600 in medical expenses for his dependent child. In 20X4, he, he received a reimbursement of 950 from the insurance company. So the medical expenses threshold for the year one or year three is uh, 3,375, which is 7.5% of 45,000. Now his medical expenses amounted to 6,600 altogether. When we deduct the difference, the medical expenses minus the 7.5% of AGI, he have left 3,250. And this is how much he can deduct. Now, when he receives the 950 from the insurance company, he got benefit uh, he'll have to include that in his income because he benefited 3,250 the prior year. What should you do now? You should go to Farhat Lectures and look at additional resources, MCQs, true false, that's going to help you understand this topic better. In the next session, what I'm going to do after I cover the medical expenses, I'm going to jump to the next session, which is what? Let's take a look at Schedule A. I'm going to go with Schedule A. We're going to look at taxes you paid. Good luck, study hard, and of course, stay safe.